Hello, I'm Stefania and I'm a postdoctoral researcher in the Wade Martins lab in the University of Oxford. I've been working here for the past three years and it's been a fantastic experience so far. I've had the chance to meet a lot of great scientists, learn so much and share science. And these are the end some of the reasons why we as researchers love these jobs so much. I also am a member of the ARUK Thames Valley Network and I want to thank ARUK for the opportunity to make this video and share with you my research on Parkinson's disease. I find my project extremely interesting and challenging. As I said, I work on Parkinson's disease and I'm mainly focusing my work on its immunological side. There are many different aspects to study in order to have a more comprehensive understanding of this awful disease and the neuroimmunological part is one of them. Parkinson's is very difficult to spot in its early stages because it is virtually asymptomatic, which means that people do not show clear signs of it. One of the main challenges is therefore to catch it on time, even before the visible symptoms such as tremors kick in. Tremors, bradykinesia and mid to late stage symptoms are due to a number of factors, one of them being the loss of neuronal cells in a part of the brain called substantia nigra, which is located in a part of the brain called midbrain. As you can see from the cartoon, and if we focus on the little ovals indicated by the arrows, when we compare a histological examination of a healthy person on the left versus an affected person on the right, the difference in the number of neurons depicted in black is appalling. The neurons are covered by a dark pigment called neuromelanin, which characterizes that part with a darker color. This loss will be that apparent in the late stages of the disease but it will hopefully give you an idea of what I mean when I talk about neuronal loss and neuronal degeneration. One of the main challenges is therefore being able to diagnose Parkinson's sooner or to beat the disease on time, and I really believe that the study of its immunological aspect might be vital for this aim. In recent years, there has been growing evidence on the involvement of the peripheral immune system in disease progression, and with my research, I'm investigating if and how it can actually play a role in worsening the health of neuronal cells. But what does peripheral immune system mean and why is it important? It is very well established that our brain has its own resident immune cells, like for example the microglia. But research that has been carried out in the last few years pointed out how immune cells that are normally found in the blood are also able to reach inflamed areas of the brain, thus contributing to the degeneration of the neurons present there. My research is focused on the T cells and their interaction with another important player in PD, which is alpha-synuclein. Alpha-synuclein is a protein that was associated with PD in 1997. In disease conditions and or because of point mutation, it can aggregate, serving as a seed on which other proteins and subcellular structures could attach, thus disrupting several cellular pathways and affecting cellular health. In addition to this, it has been very recently found that alpha-synuclein might function as an activator of the immune cells I'm interested in, the T-cells. What I imagine happening is alpha-synuclein being recognized by our immune system as an enemy and that this event leads to detrimental inflammation or inflammatory cycles. When this happens in the brain, we can talk about neuroinflammation. When I first started this project, I tried to explain to myself what neuroinflammation was and in very simplified terms, I imagine something like this. The brain is subjected to an insult, in our case let's call it alpha-synuclein, and this insult will trigger the activation of the brain resident immune cells, such as microglia, that from a resting state, which is the ramified cells in the bottom left corner, will become activated, thus producing factors that will trigger other resident cells, but also attract immune cells from the periphery, such as our T cells for example. In order to be activated, T cells need to have an identikit of what they're dealing with, and this process is called antigen presentation. Depending on which cell presents the antigen, either an immune cell or a non immune cell, different subtypes of T cells will be activated. They could have a helper profile, thus supporting activation of other cells, or a cytotoxic profile, secreting enzymes that will lyse their targets. In any case, once the antigen has been presented, then T cells will know exactly what to target and how. In our scheme, the target would be anything related to the initial insult, and what I have described is per se neuroinflammation. What I imagine happening in PD is a continuous loop of this cycle, therefore an inflammation that becomes chronic and worsens the situation in time. With my work, I have studied if T cells from patients and healthy donors can respond to alpha-synuclein and whether there is a difference in terms of activation between the two groups. This has been done in two ways. 
First, by using peripheral immune cells stimulated with alpha-synuclein in the absence of neuronal cells, trying to mimic what would happen in the blood. In this way, I would be allowed to test which populations of T cells are activated after the interaction with other antigen-presenting cells, such as, for example, macrophages, monocytes, or dendritic cells. The second way is very different from the first one, as it is about the study of T cells in the presence of neurons, so to be clear, trying to mimic what happens after they reach the brain. My main questions being, will they attack them? Will they unexpectedly protect them? To study this aspect of my project, I'm using induced pluripotent stem cells and differentiating them into dopaminergic neurons, so the black neurons I showed in the first cartoon, which compose the substantia nigra, and T cells isolated from the same donors. As mentioned, T cells should not be able to reach the brain, and this is because our brain is protected by the blood-brain barrier, an anatomical wall that should prevent phenomenon of migration from the blood to the central nervous system. Under certain conditions, either pathological or physiological, it is possible for immune cells to overcome this barrier. This is true not only for Parkinson's disease, but also for other neurodegenerative conditions, such as multiple sclerosis. For these reasons, I am really interested in studying if and how T cells can have a direct role on neuronal health, as any step towards the understanding of these mechanisms might help in the understanding of other diseases. The immunological aspect of Parkinson's is extremely complex, and many people in the lab are working on the involvement of other immune cells in order to improve our knowledge of this disease. I know there were a lot of information to process, but I hope you enjoyed the video and I would be happy to be contacted for any question you might have. Thank you so much for listening and once again thank you to ARUK for this wonderful opportunity. Bye!